Let's talk about Tori event. In the previous video, we talked about Tori's process model and introduced the two ways of inter-process communication in Tori, command and events. But only went through the examples from command. In this video, let's talk about events. Let's review the two diagrams. Command is like calling a Rust function from JavaScript, and event is fire and forget. It's very similar to the event system in JavaScript. Tori has a bunch of built-in events, such as download progress, file drop event, and of course, we can create our own event. I took some screenshots from Tori's documentation. Emit and listen function can be imported from Tori's JavaScript API. There are for global events. The listen function returns the promise that resolves to an unlisten function that can be called when a component is destroyed. We can also emit window-specific events using app window or to the newly created windows. It's pretty much the same for Rust. You can get a window by label in Rust and emit events to it. I've prepared some small example apps for you to demonstrate how to use Tori's built-in events, how to emit events from Tori core to front-end, from front-end to Tori core, and from front-end to front-end. And finally, an example clipboard monitoring app that simulates a more complex real-life scenario. So let's start coding. Let me first show you how these examples work. Example 0 will detect file drop. If I drag some files to the app, the absolute path of the files will be displayed. Example 1 is a progress bar. If I click run job, it will display a moving progress bar. Example 2 is window age. The label is the current window's name. Age is the number of seconds the current window has been opened. Windows is a list of all open windows. And if I click on new window, we get a new window. The age starts from 0, and we can see that the new window has been added to the windows list. And I can open as many windows as I want. All of them are added to the windows list. And uh, the, this number is the windows age. And the age of every window is also printed in the console. In example zero, we listen to the built-in Tori file drop event. When we drag files into the app, the event is triggered and we display the event payload. Very simple. And there is no Rust code involved. In example one, we simulate the progress bar for a long running job. In JavaScript, when the button is clicked, this long running job command is invoked. Long running job is an async command function defined in Rust. It iterates from 0 to 100 for each number. It will emit a progress event back to the window that called the long running job command. And I added a delay of 40 milliseconds. And we listen for progress events in the front end. Once we receive progress, we parse it into number and display it using this progress bar component. But remember, for this kind of code, which blocks the current thread, it has to be async. Let's see what happens if it's not async. Currently, the numbers are still incrementing. And if I click on wrong job, everything freezes until it finishes. To solve this problem, you either make it an async function or run this in a separate thread. In example two, every window is broadcasting their ages to all other windows. So let's first look at the Svelte code. Label and age are pretty straightforward. Label is the name of the window, which can be retrieved using app window objects. And age is a number that starts from zero. When the component mounts, we increment age by one for every one second. And every time the age increments, we also emit an age event. The payload contains the window label as well as the current age. On the Rust side, in the setup function of Builder, we listen to age event globally. And when we receive it, we print the payload. That's why the ages are printed in the terminal. So this is how you can emit events from front end to Tori core. Then how can Windows broadcast events to all other windows? First of all, we define the Windows objects where the key is window label and the number should be the age. In the unmount function, we listen to age event. Every time another window emits age event, this window will receive the event, parse age and label, and add the latest age of that window to Windows object then display it here as a list. Very simple. This is how Windows can use events to communicate with each other. For example, when I click on new window, a new window is opened and it starts emitting its age to the main window. And in the meanwhile, the main window is also emitting age events to the new window. That's why their ages are updated. Same happens if I open another window. Now we have three windows. And remember, they are also emitting events to the Tori core. So we can see that there are three windows printed out in the terminal. Let's look at the more complicated example. This is a clipboard listener. When I click on listen to clipboard, the is running flag becomes true. And if I copy some text, the current clipboard text field will be updated in real time. So if I copy print line, print line is here. If I copy let clipboard, it's updated. 
if I copy let mute running, again, it's updated in real time. Now, if I click on stop running, it becomes false. And if I copy some new data, the current clipper text doesn't update. Let's read the spelled code. Here we have two buttons, listen to clipboard and stop running. When they are clicked, the listen to clipboard and stop clipboard listener command are called. In Rust code, we have the two commands registered in invoke handler. Here we defined a struct. It's the state of clipboard listener. It contains a single field, clipboard listener running. It's a Boolean flag that indicates whether the clipboard listener should be running. In listen to clipboard command, we define clipboard, content, and running. Running is taken from the listener state, clipboard listener running flag. The reason we are using arc and the code is so complicated is because these variables will be moved and used in a thread. But we're not going to talk about it here because this is not a Rust tutorial. In the thread, we run a loop to iteratively get the latest content from clipboard and compare it with the previous value. If the current clipboard content doesn't match the previous clipboard text, then we update previous text and emit clipboard update event and uh, the current clipboard text to the window. In frontend, in the onMount function of frontend, we listen to clipboard update events. When we receive this event, we update clipboard text variable, which will be displayed in the web page. That's how the clipboard listener is implemented. And how do we stop it? When stop clipboard listener command is invoked, it's simply setting the running flag to false. And what does that do? In the thread, we are sharing the same running flag. In the next iteration, once it sees that the running flag becomes false, it will emit clipboard listener running event with a false payload, then return. So the thread access and doesn't keep listening for new updates. And when we receive this clipboard listener running flag, we assign it to is running and display it. However, comparing clipboard text like this is not the most efficient method. I do this to make the example easier to understand. If you want to know the right way to do it, you can look at the clipboard plugin I wrote for Tori. That's all for this video. In the coming videos, we will start talking about plugins and start building some real applications. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned and see you next time.